from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. I am Estefania Bravo. This is From the South. Venezuela's ambassador to the United Nations, Samuel Moncada, has heavily criticized the Organization of American States for recognizing opposition leader Juan Guaido's representative. Speaking at the UN Security Council, Mon Moncada said it is illegal and a lie to do so. He also said humanitarian aid is needed in the country, but blames the U.S., whose sanctions have strangled Venezuela's economy. Moncada further criticized U.S. officials in favor of increasing pressure on Venezuela through sanctions. He lied in saying that yesterday the region as a whole rejected the representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and the Organization of American States. That is false. That is a lie. It is misinformation, a problem that perhaps he needs to address with his legal team. Yesterday, what happened in their thirst to promote a coup d'etat in Venezuela and impose a puppet government to uphold their interest, the U.S. interest in Venezuela, which would allow for the pillaging of our resources, then they ran roughshod over the founding charter of the OAS, which is commensurate with the Charter of the United Nations. And they twisted the law to such an extent that what was approved was not the expulsion of the representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela to the OAS. Rather, they approved and adopted the inclusion of a representative of the National Assembly of Venezuela. And this is absurd. It's a legal fiction. After the Security Council meeting, Moncada gave a press conference where he criticized the Trump administration for pressuring Venezuelan diplomats in the U.S. It happens now that our accounts for our embassy accounts in the United States are frozen. We cannot bring in money to pay our staff because the sanctions or the measures of extortion, the illegal measures of the United States, frighten the banks and the banks don't want to touch Venezuelan money. It's not that there isn't any money, it's that they won't let the, them into these frightened banks. One of the first to speak at the Security Council meeting was the United States Vice President Mike Pence, who demanded that the UN recognize the self-proclaimed opposition figure Juan Guaido as interim president. That is something the UN has repeatedly refused to do and was roundly criticized by Russia and China. The permanent Russian representative to the UN emphatically rejected United States interventionism in Venezuela. He stated that with one hand the U.S. calls for humanitarian assistance, but with the other steals from the Venezuelan people. We reject the methods of the United States uh, uh, with regard to Venezuela. With the one hand, you're grabbing Venezuela by the throat by introducing uh, still new sanctions and restrictions which prevent the country from developing normally. At the same time, international assistance that is required by states should be aimed at creating a situation where a state can uh, take care of its own citizens. However, with the other hand, you are also uh, picking the pockets of Venezuelans. You're shamelessly expropriating Venezuelan assets in Western banks. Just from the beginning of this year, you have taken some $30 billion from the country, claiming that only uh, the self proclaimed President Guaino can uh, uh, use those funds. The overall damage from the actions of the United States to the Venezuelan economy since 2013 can, can be calculated in hundreds of billions of dollars. Cuba has proclaimed its new constitution during a ceremony at the National Assembly in Havana. The new text will substitute the previous constitution of 1976. The revised articles were ratified on February 24th on a referendum and later approved by the National Assembly. This constitution is relevant to these times and it reflects the historical circumstances of our society and guides the changes made with a vision of the future, with the supreme objective of reaching a socialism which is every day more prosperous, sustainable, inclusive and with the participation of all. With it, the revolutionary state is stronger, from which we demand transparency and respect for the law. It respects the right of women and men, 
and equality of all Cubans, without discrimination, and those are the pillars of our society. And just as Fidel Castro said on that first Congress of the Party, and I quote, today we need a socialist constitution that goes along the characteristic of our society, with a social conscience, the ideological conviction, and the desires of our people, a constitution to have the general laws for the society we have built, with the profound economic, social and political transformation made by the revolution and the historic achievement by our people. A constitution that consolidates what we are now and help us achieve what we want to be tomorrow. Castro also warned about the attempts of the U.S. to destroy the example of the Cuban Revolution, denounced the attacks against Venezuela, Nicaragua and Bolivia. The historic enemies of the revolution tried to question this, but it all falls after the massive support of our people. We have alerted about the aggressive action of the U.S. government against Latin America and the Caribbean. In name of the Monroe Doctrine, with a narrow ground distance toward socialism, the freedom of its people and the sovereign rights of the region. Our correspondent Alien Fernandez brings us the details from Havana. Cuba has proclaimed its new constitution that now has been published in the island state newspaper. The articles of this new constitution were debated by the citizens just before the referendum that approved the new legal document on February 24th. During its proclamation, the Secretary General of the Communist Party, Raul Castro, said that Cubans have big challenges ahead, especially since the U.S. blockade is intensifying, intended to attack Cuba's economy. Castro added that this attack is the worst in 50 years. The Secretary General also ratified the commitment by the Cuban government and the Communist Party with Venezuela and the Bolivarian Revolution, saying that they have the right to self-determination despite the violent attacks to this Latin American nation that violate international law. We thank Alien for that report. More news now. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's main challenger, Benny Gantz, has conceded defeat in the country's general election. Netanyahu will stay in power for a fifth term with the support of religious and right-wing parties. With almost all votes counted, Netanyahu could form a 65-seat majority in parliament. However, he could be indicted in the upcoming months for three corruption cases. We are not only going to the opposition, we are going to the Knesset to start the next round. I am declaring from here to the Likud, to Netanyahu, to the coalition, we will make your life hell. We'll be back very soon. Stay with us. Welcome back. Police officers have raided the house of Peru's former president, Pedro Pablo Kuczynski. A judge initially ordered that Kuczynski be detained for 10 days in connection with a money laundering investigation. The former president was taken to the legal medicine unit after alleging he has a health condition that could prevent him from going into detention. Two more people were detained in the case. Kuczynski's lawyer has denied any wrongdoing. This is obviously an abuse, because there is no proof that links our client with any act of corruption. The arguments of his defense have been heard in various hearings. Our correspondent Jaime Herrera brings us more details. We are outside of Pedro Pablo Kuczynski's home where police forces have been deployed. Also inside, some police officers are raiding the place, along with officials from the public prosecutor's office. This detention order is aimed at transferring Pedro Pablo Kuczynski and two other people involved in the case to a police station to further deepen the investigation on corruption and money laundering regarding contracts for the building of public infrastructure. However, it has been reported that Kuczynski has said that he has a health condition at the moment and needs medical attention to determine if he can be transferred to a detention center. Some minutes ago, a police vehicle entered his house to take Kuczynski to the legal medicine unit. There he could stay up to 10 days until the prosecutor decides if an investigation will be open against him. We thank Jaime for that report. A new migrants caravan has set out from Honduras. Hundreds of people, including women and children, have started their journey north, hoping to reach the U.S. They say they are seeking for a better life and future. 53,000 migrants seeking asylum were detained at the U.S. southern border in March, according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. 
We can't do anything without work. We have nothing and no food for the children. Dutch and French-speaking Caribbean countries may impose immigration restrictions on British citizens if the UK pulls out of the European Union without a deal. The islands include Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Martin and St. Barthélemy. The UK Foreign Office issued a travel update warning that the situation was uncertain in those states. Other countries that may impose the limits on British immigration are Reunion and Mayotte in the Indian Ocean, New Caledonia and French Polynesia in the Pacific and French Guyana off the coast of South America. St. Kitts and Nevis Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris says there is no merit to claims that he is guilty of nepotism. The opposition and other critics have said several close relatives of Dr. Harris are in top positions in the judiciary, the banking sector and other areas. While acknowledging that his family members do hold key positions in some of the areas mentioned, Dr. Harris says they had all been appointed under the previous administration. A Trinidadian broadcaster based in Barbados passed away on Wednesday. Vioma Ali died from a heart attack. She was a marketing specialist in Barbados and was a well-known voice on Capital Media HD 99.3. Ali was formerly employed at Starcom Network Inc. and was a columnist for Barbados Today. The controversial unexplained wealth bill has been passed in the lower house of Trinidad and Tobago's parliament. After several hours of deliberations, all 34 members voted in favor of the amended bill that seeks to probe people's unexplained wealth for the recovery of criminal property. The proposed law has no exemption for sitting members of government. Why should corrupt politicians why should people in public life who are guilty of misbehavior in public office be afraid to explain themselves in a court of law? People in this country in talking about Mr. Big over and over again make an allegation of politicians that they're either crooks or mooks. And they believe that all politicians are crooked. And here we have a government saying, come and inspect everybody in the government side. Come and, come and inspect everybody in the government side and the only people in this oh, parliament process. who are saying, don't do that, don't inspect me, is the opposition. Dominica's Douglas Charles Airport reopened on Tuesday evening. The airport was closed after a twin-engine aircraft crashed on Monday. All 32 people on board of the plane escaped major injuries. Normal operations are expected to resume following the removal of the damaged plane. Researchers in Uruguay have developed a software to help recover documents from the dictatorship. Victims and family members of those who disappeared helped in the process. The search for truth never ends. Researchers and professors working at the Universidad de la República in Uruguay have created a software to recover archives from the dictatorship. These documents are unreadable, but this program can help with its transcription. The software is called Luisa. With its help, we can rescue documents that are damaged and cannot be read. The program allows everyone to search the document by typing keywords. Our algorithms can help us filter that search and rescue the document. The transcriptions are organized in a database. The name of the software pays tribute to Luisa Cuesta, who died in November 2018, at the age of 98, without knowing what happened to her son, Nevio Melo. He disappeared in Argentina during the dictatorship. We are currently working on the first phase of the project that can allow us to identify and read all the archives. But this doesn't always work automatically. There are programs that can recognize characters or words, but most of the information in these documents was written by hand or pages are damaged and cannot be read. That is why we are inviting people to help us. The program allows users to access pictures with blocks of words and a blank page to transcribe what people can read. Then, experts use grammar rules to transcribe the documents and then they use the statistics to find out what is the keyword that was most used for searchers. 
I think this will allow us access to a lot of information that many people have been looking for. We'll also be able to interpret these documents, cross-check the information and confirm if certain information is true or not. We'll be able to learn about our own history. This software is part of a bigger project at the Universidad de la República that will help people access more than three million documents from the military and the archives of the former National Agency of Intelligence. To access the project, visit www.cruzar.uy and click on the tab that says Luisa. Fly we'll back very soon, stay with us. Welcome back. Algeria's interim president, Abdel Khaldur Ben Salah, has announced that the country will head to the polls on July 4th to choose a new president. Ben Salah pledged on Tuesday to organize fresh elections within 90 days of him being appointed as interim president. He was appointed as interim president by the country's parliament on Tuesday to replace Abdelaziz Bouteflika, who resigned following mass protest. But protests continue despite the interim president's announcement. Demonstrators are calling for immediate elections and an entire change of government. They have vowed to continue protests until their demands are met. They have to go. They all have to go. They are undeserving. Not Pensala, Bedavu, or Benes. Not a single one. You need a new country, a new country. Let us live, live. And the head of the army has urged the judiciary to start prosecuting what he described as the country's ruling elite. Lieutenant Ahmed Gaid Sala said the judiciary should launch proceedings into corruption, abuse of power and plundering of the resources. Sala described the men around the former president as the gang. On Wednesday, the Algerian Interim Ministry issued licenses to 10 new political parties. The United Nations has postponed a reconciliation conference in Libya amid fighting capital Tripoli. The three-day meeting was to open a path to presidential and parliamentary elections by the end of the year. 120 delegates were also expected to be part of a negotiating table to chart the country's political failure. In a statement, the UN envoy to Libya said he could not ask people to attend a conference to the backdrop of artillery, shelling and air raids. Funerals have been held for 12 girls killed by airstrikes in Yemen. A crowd carried their coffins across Asana. The girls were killed after blasts were registered near two schools in the capital on a Sunday. The Saudi-led coalition continued carrying airstrikes this Wednesday against two Houthi targets. We come today to the funeral of Yemen's children who were in school and were brutally and criminally targeted by the Saudi-American enemy. Why did they target them? Are they the militia they said were accurately targeted? Is this the accuracy? To target girls and children from al Rae school and say they are Ansarullah militia? Where are the militias? In Sudan, thousands of protesters have pressed on demanding the resignation of President Omar al-Bashir. For five days, demonstrators have continued to throng the army complex throughout the night. Protests were originally sparked by the rise in the cost of living in December. But demonstrators now want the entire government to leave. A group of 25 Sahrawi journalists persecuted by the Moroccan occupation forces are now being recognized for their efforts to break the media blockade on the last African colony. Cameras, cell phones and the internet are the main tools for Akeep Media, a group of Sahrawi journalists that are trying to break the media blockade imposed on Western Sahara since 1975. Akeep Media was founded in 2009, aimed at breaking the media blockade. Doing so, despite all the obstacles we have suffered to do our job, all the risks we have taken, like being in prison and even the death of our colleagues. From the roofs of Western Sahara, they try to record the constant aggressions and arbitrary detentions perpetrated by the Moroccan occupation forces against the Saharawi people. Equip Media tries to show the actions perpetrated by the Moroccan occupation forces in the Western Sahara. 
There has been no self-determination yet, and for that reason we try to report, in order to achieve self-determination for our people. Since 1975, Spain has been considered the administrative power of Western Sahara, as it has not carried out the decolonization process properly, something that is hidden by Spanish media outlets. In the last five to seven years, due to the economic crisis, Spanish media outlets have taken a step towards the mercantilization of content. They only promote commercial content, and the Western Sahara does not fit with that. It also aligns with the Spanish state, which is not interested in solving the Western Sahara situation. Five members of Akeep Media are currently in prison. Among them, Mohamed Bambari, sentenced to 12 years for recording the demonstrations and the detentions prompted by the occupation forces. Mozambique, Zimbabwe and Malawi continue to deal with the after effects of the devastating Sukhon Edai. Hundreds of people are still missing and thousands are in need of food, water and shelter. As of Monday, almost a thousand people had been reported dead in the three countries. Mozambique was the worst affected with 600 people killed and almost 2 million affected by a cholera outbreak. Search efforts are still ongoing in neighboring Zimbabwe with many missing bodies believed to have been washed away or buried underground. Sambian villagers have won a landmark victory in a British court against mining giant Vedanta over alleged pollution. In 2015, the villagers accused Vedanta of poisoning their water and destroying their farmlands. They have been fighting for the right to seek compensation in British courts for several years. Vedanta had argued that the case should be heard in Zambia. However, the UK Supreme Court disagreed and allowed the case to proceed in the UK. In India, a Vedanta-owned Cooper smelting plant was closed by authorities in May 2018 on similar allegations. Scientists for the first time in human history have managed to take a photo of a black hole using a global network of telescopes. The slightly blurred photo of the black hole at the center of a massive galaxy called Messier 87 was taken using data from eight radio telescopes in six locations across the globe. The combined signals created a planet-sized telescope that could capture a glimpse of the black hole, which is about 54 million light years away from the Earth. This is a special moment because it was something that was predicted in theory, but from an experimental point of view it was very unlikely that we could ever do it. And so the fact that this happened means, first of all, that Einstein's theory is incredibly precise, even beyond what had been attributed to him. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. These and other stories, as always, find them on our website at telesonenglish.net. And also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. For Tresor English, I am Estefania Bravo. Thank you for watching.